Is it correct to say my family is or my family are? A group of us is meeting tomorrow or a group of us are meeting tomorrow. You'll find out as we take a look at singular nouns, plural verbs and quantifying expressions. In this episode of Aprender Inglés con Reza y Craig. Hi, I'm Reza. And my name's Craig. And with nearly 50 years of teaching between us, we'll help you improve your English and take it to the next level. How are things, Craig? Things are very well, thank you. How are you doing? I'm fine. I can't complain. I'm enjoying the start of this hopefully prosperous and healthy new year. And you? Me too. I have to apologize to people. Some people have been writing to me asking about the B2 first course that I promised would be out in November. <laughs> We're now in, well, now in January 2022, and it will be ready, I promise, in a week or two. So keep listening to the podcast. And if you want the latest news on that, sign up to the newsletter over at inglespodcast.com. Shall we get straight down to business? Yes, let's go to our first voice message this week from Tim from Switzerland. Now, Tim passed his B2 exam a year ago, but he's having some challenges when it comes to communicating and speaking to customers and clients in English. So let's listen to Tim. Hello, Reza and Craig. This is Tim from cold Switzerland. I really owe you guys a message because you both helped me a year ago to pass the B2 exam. This was essential for me to get a new job as a service consultant by BMW. I got in touch with your podcasts again because I realized how difficult it is to use a new language in daily life. Although I got the certificate, there are many English-speaking customers at my job. And every time I get nervous, I fail almost every time to have a fluent conversation. So do you have any suggestions for me to keep control over the language in stressful situations? I would really appreciate an answer. And once again, I want to thank you for your effort to teach us English. Thanks. Bye, guys. Thank you very much, Tim, for your message. It's uh, lovely to hear from you. And I have a feeling, let's see if you agree with me, Reza, that this is more a confidence problem than a language problem that Tim's having because his message was excellent and his level of English is clearly good enough to have a comfortable conversation with clients. What do you think? Indeed, judging from that audio, I would say that Tim definitely has at least a B2 level and possibly quite a lot higher. So it's probably, yeah, your confidence because your pronunciation was good. Your accuracy was good. It was a very good audio. I would point out one tiny little thing, though. You said that you were a consultant and your pronunciation of the word consultant wasn't quite right. I think you, you said the s uh, as a z. So the pronunciation of consultant would be the only thing that really caught my attention. And one little thing I'd like to point out. You said, Tim, every time I'm getting nervous. If it's every time, it's something that happens constantly. It's more like a habit, something that repeats. So you need the present simple tense, not the present continuous. So every time I get nervous. Now, how can we help Tim? I think really, Tim, you need to practice and feel more confident inside your English personality. So what you need to do is to get with someone who you can practice with, possibly online. We've got some suggestions for you. Some are free and some are paid, but really you need to do some kind of language exchange or speak to a native speaker and practice your English. And then 
when you're in front of customers and you feel like you're under a little pressure, you'll have more confidence and you won't worry about making any mistakes. Do you want to add anything, Reza? No, I would just reiterate, that means repeat exactly what Craig said. I think you definitely have the level to keep progressing in your English. It's just a question of confidence, Tim. Our first recommendation is a company who used to sponsor this podcast. Unfortunately, they don't anymore, but we do like the service. That's italki.com. Italki is a marketplace online that connects teachers with students. So one possibility is to go there, Tim, and find a native speaker and pay that person to help you with your fluency. But they also have a, a service where you can for free connect with somebody and do language exchanges online. So that's another possibility. I don't know if you're a German speaker or a French speaker as well, but perhaps you could do a language exchange and have half an hour in English and half an hour in another language that you speak, perhaps, and practice that way. A similar website is hello.tv, H-A-L-L-O dot TV. And it's similar to italki. It has a free and a paid version. All of these links I'm mentioning you can find in the show notes at inglespodcast.com slash 398. Another recommendation is speakingclub.com. This is quite a new one. I don't know if you've heard of this, Reza, but it looks free for one meeting. And then if you want to meet more than once a week, you have to pay. It's people getting together on Zoom and speaking English. Have you heard of this website? I haven't, but it sounds good. I think it's quite new. I haven't tried it myself, but... If you do try it, Tim or anyone who wants to practice fluency, please let us know if you like this service and we'll continue to recommend it. Now, some of you may remember in the past, Reza and I have recommended a site from Cambridge called Write and Improve, which works with artificial intelligence, AI. And it's quite an interesting concept. You answer a writing question and you get AI feedback on your collocation, your grammar, your vocabulary, and it's fairly good and it's also completely free. Well, they've actually launched another website called Speak and Improve. Now, I tried speakandimprove.com and Cambridge gave me a, an English level of B1. So I'm not sure how accurate it is. <laughs> You need to listen to more podcasts. Maybe <laughs> maybe I shouldn't be writing a B2 course if I only have a B1 level. So they seem to think my English is at B1 level. I don't know. Maybe I need to spend more time on the website. But you could try that as well. That's absolutely free. And we know someone who also does paid courses, don't we, Reza? Yes, we highly recommend putitlikethis.com. That's our good friend Lynn's website. Lynn is a teacher with many, many years of experience who really knows what she's doing. Putitlikethis.com is her website. And if you do get in touch with Lynn via her website, please let her know that Reza and I sent you to her. And those are some recommendations. Some are paid, some are free. And I hope that that's helpful to you, Tim. Just keep on practicing. Craig, we've got another voice message. Now we have to travel west to get to this one. This is from Mexico, and it's Ramiro from Guadalajara. Hello, Craig. Hello, Reza. This is Ramiro from Guadalajara, Mexico. I really enjoy your podcast and I wanted to take this time to say thank you for this amazing site and also for the podcast. I work as a teacher in a school here in Mexico. I know that maybe my pronunciation is not the best, but I am working on it and I would like to learn more about specifically terms related to the academic area. I have to let you know that I was looking for italki, the tool to do talk a lot during your episodes, and I didn't find how to redeem your 
voucher or your credits. I, I found the page, but I didn't find the page inside your site. So I really appreciate if you can help me and give me some steps in order that I can redeem your credits. Thank you and greetings from Mexico. Thank you very much, Ramiro, for sending in your voice message. Unfortunately, we no longer are sponsored by italki, so we do not have that offer available. You were listening to older episodes when we were sponsored by them. Go to inglespodcast.com slash 398, the show notes for this episode, Ramiro, and look at the links that we've listed there. So you'll see italki, hello, speakingclub.com. You may find those useful for practicing your English. Reza, I think we did a lesson with our friend Wayne on pronunciation that might be interesting to Ramiro, didn't we? Yes, we did. Wayne talked about word stress and other things in episode 180. So, Ramiro, if you go to englishpodcast.com slash 180, 180, you'll find some useful information there. And also, you ask about academic English. We did a podcast on academic English as well, I believe, Craig, didn't we? We did indeed. That was episode 162. So go to englishpodcast.com slash 162. It was called Academic Terms and Vocabulary. So we hope you'll find that useful, Ramiro. And thank you very much for your message. Next, we have a voice message from Ecuador, and it's from Johanna. Hello, Russ and Craig. This is Joanna from Ecuador. I hope you guys are doing great and preparing yourselves for some fun Christmas holidays. I have been listening to your podcast almost every day while commuting, and I have to say that I'm very thankful for all the amazing job you have been doing. Keep it up, guys, and thanks a lot for all the, your generosity. Regarding grammar, I have a question about the use of do and does. Um, I remember that I uh, listened to Reza in an episode where he, where you were talking about privacy in the internet and the um, I think Ressa mentioned that uh, Firefox don't store your data. And then uh, some episode also, it seemed that uh, Ressa said something like uh, the majority, the best majority don't. So my choice, I think it would good have been doesn't considering that we are talking about a specific group and uh, also about one web browser. So if you could please explain a little bit, I would be very, very thankful. Thanks a lot and have a good one. Bye-bye. So Reza, are you preparing yourself for some fun Christmas holidays this year? Well, as fun as it can be, but because of all the restrictions, because we're still uh, living with, uh, with the coronavirus pandemic. I don't know when you're listening to this podcast, it might be in the future, but because of those restrictions, fun is limited. But yeah, I'm going to enjoy myself as best I can. And you? No, not at oh. all. <laughs> I'm going to be working on my course until the end of the year. Actually, we're speaking to future Reza and future Craig because this will be published in January. But when we are actually recording this, it's just pre-Christmas. So we're thinking of what we're going to be doing. But when you hear this, we already will have done nothing this Christmas. But uh, we hope you're enjoying your Christmas, Johanna, or that you had a good Christmas holiday and that you enjoyed your new year. One small thing about your message, which was absolutely wonderful, very, very good, very clear. But when you pronounced the word would, W-O-U-L-D, it sounded a little bit to me like good. You said would have been. So be careful of the pronunciation of would that W sound, it sounded a bit like a G sound to me. And I would just say one thing as well, Joanna. 
you said thank you for all the amazing job, but you should have said thank you for all the amazing work because a job or two jobs or 50 jobs are countable. It means professions or roles, but you mean generally just the uncountable work we've done. So all the amazing work you should have said. We really liked your question. It made me think a lot because... I think, Reza, you did say exactly what Joanna said. Firefox don't store your data. Now, Firefox is the subject, so it's a company, isn't it? Would you class that as a singular or a plural? Would you say they or it? That's a very good question. Either would be my answer. In English, we don't really mind which one you use. We're very... Lax, that means relaxed about that. When it's a singular, technically, because it's a company, that really should be a singular, but it represents lots of people in the company, lots of components, lots of members, then you can use a plural if you like. So I was right grammatically when I said Firefox don't store your data, but it would also be perfectly right to say Firefox doesn't store your data That would also be correct. They're both correct, in fact. Yep, so it really doesn't matter which one you use, China. And your second example was the vast majority don't. That's the vast majority of people. Well, the majority is a quantifying expression, isn't it? The majority of something. And when we use quantifying expressions like the majority... They can be used with plural nouns and pronouns. And in this case, we often use plural verbs. For example, the vast majority of people are vaccinated. So I used are, even though the majority would be a singular item. Although you could use is if you wanted to, it's not as common. You could say the vast majority of people is vaccinated, but in modern English, that's not very common. If you go back about 50 years, people did use the singular a bit more, but you don't have to. It was never a strict rule. And these days, people will tend to use the plural when it is, as Craig said, a quantifying expression. And let's look at some more examples of these quantifying expressions because they are quite interesting. Similar to the majority of people or the vast majority, you could say a group of people. So a group of us are going out for a drink. Do you want to come? A group of us are going out for a drink. Another example with the word a number. A number of candidates have tried to cheat in the exam, but few have succeeded. So normally you would think, well, a number, a, is singular. Yeah, but clearly a number refers to plural. It's a number after all. So in fact, it's more common to use the plural. A number of candidates have tried, not has. Another quantifying expression is a couple. A couple. So a couple of my friends are going to Madrid for Christmas. It sounds a bit strange to say a couple of my friends is. I don't think I would say that. I don't think anybody would say that one. That doesn't sound right at all. Definitely not. So a couple of my friends are going to Madrid for Christmas. Can you think of another example? Another one is half. What about half of Craig's students don't understand a word he says? True. That's what he told me, but I think he's been a bit hard on himself. But anyway, he says half of his students, so half of Craig's students don't. Well, a half is singular, but we don't put half with a singular because really what we're interested in is the students, which is plural. So we say half of Craig's students don't understand. We use the third person plural, don't. And as we saw before with Reza's example of Firefox being a company, sometimes with nouns you can use the plural or the singular verb with them. For example, family or team or government. They're examples of groups of people that can be used either with plural or singular verbs and pronouns. 
Let me give you an example. My team is playing tomorrow. Or my team are playing tomorrow. And perhaps you would choose is playing or are playing if you think of the team as five or 12 or 11 individual players. So you're personalizing it, then you'd use the plural are. But if it's more of a singular unit, then you'd choose is. Do you agree with that? Yes, that's exactly how I would say it. Here's another example. Family. My family have decided to come to us for Christmas dinner. They don't want to cook this year. So when I say they, I'm referring to family, which is a family, one family. But I said my family have decided. I could have said my family has decided. It can be third person singular or plural. In this case, I decided to use plural. Have decided and they don't want. And because Reza's speaking about his family, then he's obviously thinking about the family as the separate individual people in the family. So he'd choose the plural. But if the sentence is more impersonal, more distant, then maybe you would choose the third person. For example, the average British family spends £740 more or 29% more money in December than it spends the rest of the year. So because I don't know the family, I'm just as a generic British family, it's very distant from me, then I choose it as the pronoun and third person spends. The government is another of these nouns, which we can call collective singulars, by the way. It's a singular, but it represents more than one, a collective singular. The government, who are hoping to ease lockdown restrictions soon, have been under a lot of criticism. I'm using the third person plural there. I could say the government who is, but I've decided to use the plural. The government who are. And perhaps by using are, the plural, and thinking more of all the members of the government rather than the government as a unit. Before we had the example of Firefox as a company, so Firefox don't store your data, we could say, or Firefox doesn't store your data. Again, this idea of thinking of the company as a personal entity, a personal thing, or maybe an impersonal thing, Listen to these two examples. Reza might say, my company are wonderful. They gave me a 500 euro Christmas bonus this year. Is that true, Reza, did they? If only, (laughs) if only. (laughs) So because he's so connected to his company, he'd say, they are wonderful. They gave me. But if it's more impersonal, you might say, my company was founded in 1996, or this company was founded in 1996. So it could depend on how you see the company. Craig, the word a lot or a lot of for you, should that go with a singular or a plural? I think it would go with a plural noun. A lot of people, a lot of traffic, a lot of money. Sure, definitely with a plural noun. But what about if you put a verb with it? Which one sounds better to you? Or which one sounds right, which one sounds wrong. There is a lot of people here today, or there are a lot of people here today. I think both have become acceptable. I think many years ago, it wouldn't be so correct to say there is a lot of people. It would be more correct to say there are a lot of people, because people are plural. But I think, in especially in speech, in spoken English these days, you very often hear is contracted. There's a lot of people at the party. There's a lot of people in the city centre. Do you agree with that? Yeah. What about this one? A lot of pills, tablets, pills, right? A lot of pills isn't good for you or aren't good for you or both. Uh, I would say a lot of pills aren't good for you. And you wouldn't accept isn't? 
I'd accept it, but I wouldn't necessarily say it. I don't think it's wrong. Do you agree? Yeah. Well, for me, they're both pretty good, actually. I, I don't have any particular preference. A lot of pills isn't. The idea of taking a lot of pills, so that's like almost like an idea rather than just the pills. There's kind of the idea of it. So idea, look at it as singular, if you like. So quite often when a lot of combines with a plural noun, we don't really care if it's singular or plural verb that goes with it when it's the verb to be. And sometimes you can even mix singular and plural forms in the same sentence. You could say, for example, the band or the group gave its first concert in Valencia and they went on to play live in Madrid and Barcelona. So I used its at the beginning of the sentence and that changed to they after. The band gave its first concert in Valencia and they went on to play live in Madrid and Barcelona. Here's another one. The government, which is disliked by many people, are a bunch of liars. So first we had... You're talking about the Spanish government, the British I'm government, governments in general? A theoretical government. I'm not going to name <laughs> any government in particular. So I mixed singular and plural there, and people would do it. The government, which is disliked by many people, are a bunch of liars. And it's what Craig was saying earlier. When I say the government, which is disliked, I'm taking the government as a unit. And then perhaps when I say they are a bunch of liars, they are, I'm thinking of the individual members who make up that unit. And maybe that's why subconsciously I prefer to use the plural are. And another example, the club who have beaten us was created by amateurs. Again, we're mixing plural and singular. The club who have beaten us, because maybe I'm thinking of the individual members of the club, was created by amateurs. Craig, can you think of any more group nouns or collective singulars that can be used with plural and singular verbs? There are many, but we've put a few in a list for you. There's firm, for example. Now, firm is a synonym of company. You can say Firefox is a technology company or a technology firm. So you could say my firm is or my firm are. Bank is another one. Again, it's a company, it's an entity, but it's made up of lots of members. So the bank is, the bank are, both good. Orchestra, very popular at this time of the year. Lots of concerts happening. You could say, for example, the Berlin Philharmonic Orchestra is world famous or are world famous, depending if you're thinking of the individual musicians or if you're thinking of the orchestra as a whole, as a separate entity. Staff is a very important word. I hear people use it in Spanish as well. Well, in English, we don't really mind if you treat it as a singular or a plural. So you can say the staff is, the staff are. Another one is school, the school is, the school are. What about the public, Craig? Yeah, again, it could be the public is or the public are. For example, the public is patiently following the pandemic safety guidelines at Christmas time. Or the public are patiently following the pandemic. So public, another example of a word that would take the plural or the singular form. More collective singulars are jury, the group of people who are chosen to decide if someone is guilty or not guilty, a club, a class, organisations like the BBC. In Spain, that would be RTVE, Radio Televisión Española. A choir, a group of singers, a union, and even a country. Can you think of an example of a, of a country, Craig? Well, if you're thinking of the national team of a country, for example, England, you could say England have just lost the cricket test match to Australia. And you can also say England has just lost the cricket test match to Australia. So national teams, again, if you're thinking of the individual players, use the plural. If you're thinking of the team as a whole, use the singular. OK, so what have you learned in this episode? Well, hopefully you've learned that in English, we're not that fussy when it comes to <laughs> grammar. Singular, Some, sometimes. Sometimes, other times we are. But certainly when it comes to 
nouns which in theory are singular, but they represent various people or groups or members or elements, then you can use a plural. Just trying to remember if you're thinking of the group as a more personal thing, the individual members of the group, or are you thinking of it as a separate unit? And thank you very much, Joanna, for that interesting question. But now it's time for you to practice your English. We would love to hear from you. Why don't you send us a voice message? You can do that by going to speakpipe.com, S-P-E-A-K-P-I-P-E dot com slash English podcast. You have 90 seconds as a maximum to tell us your name, where you're from, and maybe an idea for a future episode. Emails, Reza? If you prefer to write, send an email to craig at englishpodcast.com or belfastreza at gmail.com. And if you're interested in paid courses to help you with your English, go to store, S-T-O-R-E, dot mansioningles.net where you'll find paid courses on the Mansion Ingles website. As ever, at the end of each episode, we thank all of you who very kindly donate money to the podcast and you support us through the Patreon scheme. If you're interested, go to patreon.com slash podcast and you'll see that for as little as $1.20 per month, the 20 cents is to cover the VAT tax, by the way. For $1.20, you can join the Patreon scheme. And as a kind of thank you, we will send you access to recent audio transcriptions. We'd like to thank everybody who's supporting us on the Patreon program. Unfortunately, we don't have time for that. But we will say hello, welcome and thank you to our latest supporters this month. They are Erasmo Melo, thank you, Gabriela Mendez, Jorge Prado de la Cruz, Jaime Gallego, and Christian. Thank you so much for helping us on Patreon. What's next week, Reza? Next week, something very close to my heart, Ireland. I look forward to talking about that with you next week, Reza. Until next time, thank you so much for listening this week. Have a great week, and we'll see you soon. It's goodbye from me. And it's bye-bye from me. The music in this podcast is by Pitts. The track is called See You Later. <laughs>